Here's what I think you will get after watching this episode. Firstly, I think the key concepts of maximizing the returns of your portfolio in the crypto bull cycle. Secondly, the key concepts on compounding your returns through the crypto bull cycle. And finally, to be a much better trader and investor than before watching this video, as it has all the information you need to become a better trader and investor and to succeed in this market. This is the first episode of Finance Forward, a podcast designed for you to establish financial freedom through all the experience and knowledge I've gathered in being in crypto for more than seven years. It's one of the key concepts of the markets as you're entering the crypto bull cycle to make a lot of money through altcoins, and that is completely fine. I've been doing that myself and I have been doing it for multiple cycles. This is my third one. In the first one, I've been running my portfolio from 3K to 50K. In the second one, I did it from 30K to 10 million, but I've also been able to round trip a lot of my profits. So I can confirm that I'm able to provide you with all the information you need to create a financial stable future for yourself. The name is changed to Finance Forward, which will be a weekly podcast where I'll be sharing all the experiences and knowledge I wish I had when I started, so you progress yourself to financial freedom. This will also include guest interviews in the coming period, but it slowly will be continuing to increase the actual quality of the content. The crucial part about establishing a large return in the crypto bull cycle is that you don't need a small cap to have giant returns and you don't need 50 altcoins in your portfolio to make massive returns. You just need to make sure that you pick the actual right altcoins in your portfolio and that you're able to rotate those gains towards the next altcoins or Bitcoin, making sure that you're compounding your returns, ultimately leading to a case where you are making more Bitcoin and holding that Bitcoin until the end of the cycle. Before we dive into today's content, I want to express my gratitude. With more than 165,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel, I am truly humbled by the, your support and your interest and your decision to tune in and engage with my videos. It means a lot to me. I generally appreciate every comment, message, interaction, DM, your feedback fuels my passion for creating content and I'm committed to providing valuable insights even more. Thank you for being part of this incredible community and let's continue to do this together. I'd like to make an agreement with you. If you subscribe to this YouTube channel, I'll make sure that I'll continue to increase the content as much as I can. And I can share that there are some very cool things coming up. The first Finance Forward is here for you today but there will be more exciting additions to the, to the show, a new production, fresh content, a revamped studio, all designed to support the journey. We have to create a stable future with more financial freedom, especially in a world that we live in that is not great, that has a lot of inflation and that is putting a lot of people under pressure. In that regard, I'd like to share something, which is that um, I've been mentioning our role as consultant in the previous videos. Um, thanks to your enormous interest, we are happy to share that we're currently full. We aim to become a boutique, which is not about quantity, but it is about quality. And we think that everybody should get the best quality of portfolio assistance as possible. And we want to impact everyone who's part of the group. However, you can still provide your interest through our website, through the link below in the description, and then you will be the first to know when we are opening up with our consultancy, which will be in the coming few months, as we are currently expanding our team. Our vacancies are live, which you will be able to find on our website when you click on careers. The link is also in the description beneath. We are searching for multiple um, consultants, an editor slash a visual designer, a performance marketeer, research analysts, business development, and a content manager. If you want to be able to provide an impact to a financial stable future in the crypto landscape, make sure to keep an eye out on our website. 
We'll be discussing everything surrounding a potential massive return of your portfolio in this video, through which we'll start with a general market update and overview of what has been happening in the past few weeks, um, in which we will be providing you all the essential information on an analyzing altcoins, strategically building your portfolio and leveraging your returns so you can keep on compounding your returns. Let's get started. So the general market update, it has to be about a few important things. First of all, Coinbase is still having a court casing um, against the SEC. And then we've had the news regarding KuCoin being charged by the DOJ. Um, and also two of the founders having the exact same issue. Through which the market started to correct a little bit. Um, and as a result, as you can see on the screen, the... Um, amount of volume being traded on KuCoin has been going down a lot and you can also see that the market share has been dropping substantially on the left side you can see the volume in USD which has been going through the roof on the actual day that we saw the news coming out as likely people are selling their positions and swapping it towards another exchange so the volumes have been dropping here um, and then additionally we can see that the market share has been dropping from from around six to seven percent towards three percent which is the current value um, which um, is actually an underperformance or not great for the exchange itself but to be honest it, this was actually um, the rumors were around already and i think there are multiple exchanges out there which comes to the conclusion that if you are having money on the exchange just use it to trade uh, there are some good exchanges out there, but most of the exchanges that are getting charged at this point, KuCoin for instance, doesn't have any license at all. So split it around exchanges and make sure that if you have an investment amount to uh, take it off the exchange and have it on a ledger or any custody provider that is actually completely safe. Now, this is one of the key points that we have been seeing. Another important part is the one that we have been focusing on which is bitcoin spot etf has been approved and now we're looking for the ethereum etf to be approved as well but the odds of having the approval are actually close to closer to zero percent than closer to 100 percent which ultimately means that if you have a uh, a level of zero percent or close to it the expectations are going to be relatively negative when it comes to the ultimate um, approval. So at this point, we are close to eight weeks prior to it. We can see that they have been filing the standard procedure, which is filing the 19B4 ETF filings, which also has received public comments from the SEC um, for Grayscale, for Bitwise and Fidelity which doesn't really have any impact on the chances of having an approval. But we do know that the SEC has been coming after the Ethereum Foundation and they have to because um, if they don't and just classify Ethereum as a commodity, it will be just a, a massive move forward for the entire cycle. So if Ethereum wins this entire thing, gets an approval, it is also a generally big approval for everything that's in the ethereum ecosystem also for things that um, are classified as DeFi. if ethereum is not a security it's a commodity and then most of the things are going to be the same so there's a whole battlefield happening at this point um, they are continuing with the process of the filings that they need to do for the actual etf so that's a good step forward but ultimately I think that the chances of an approval are closer to 0%. And if you continue to watch that entire momentum, you can also conclude that watching the momentum and looking at the actual price action, you can see that the momentum is not skewed towards Ethereum. It is controlled around Bitcoin and Solana, through which um, the automatic conclusion is being made that the markets are super bearish on Ethereum and expecting Ethereum to actually not do well um, and to not have an approval on the ETF. While maybe in the coming period that rotation is going to be happening that the Ethereum ETF is actually going to be approved and that is going to cause a substantial positive impact 
to the market as a whole. When we talk about the ETF, we need to talk about the inflow because Bitcoin has been seeing a correction of around 10% and also the entire markets have been seeing a correction. That is mostly due to macroeconomic impacts on the markets, but it is also due to the fact that the ETF inflow has been going down um, and it might be continuing to go down. Um, so we had a first period, as you can see, this is the net outflow um, in the first stages, which was mostly due to grayscale, I guess, the, the rotation towards, uh, um, towards BlackRock. Then a massive inflow when it comes to uh, the data, which is from um, mostly BlackRock, new investors, institutions, fueling the actual price of Bitcoin upwards, as you can see. Then a period of consolidation, which has led to the price of Bitcoin to consolidate or go into a range as well. And it's very likely that at some point the inflow is going to dwindle down a little bit because you can just not expect this inflow to continue to do this, especially when the prices are going to rally up like we have been seeing with the recent price action on Bitcoin. So automatically this is super bullish and super positive. But when you're looking at this entire scope, you need to make sure that it's not continuing to do so for this entire period and a period of, of sideways consolidation on the actual inflow isn't a negative thing. It is a normal thing, but usually those switches in sentiment have an enormous impact on the market, or at least a substantial impact on the market, which we have seen. So the inflow is still net positive. There's more than 12 billion coming into the markets or have been coming in. And it's just a matter of time before it continues to swindle even more. But at this point, this inflow has been stalling for a little bit, which is not a bad sign. Now, when we're looking at the markets, um, there are a few important parts. The first part is that we could generally still see the exact same price pattern as in the previous cycle. So I'll just move to the weekly chart in which we can see that we are having a massive rally pre-halving. We have been seeing a consolidation during the previous halving. And we can see that we had a pretty substantial rally upwards in the halving period of 2016. And as a result, we had a correction afterwards. As a result, we had a correction here too. And in 2013, we had a correction prior to the halving and then we continued to stall. So if we look at this entire scope and if the markets are going to actually provide some corrections, it might make sense to say, okay, we might be going towards uh, a little bit lower beneath 60K before we continue to do so. Um, further, when we're looking at the markets at this point, um, I think that the correction is definitely going to happen. But mostly the entire correction has been taking place on the altcoins through which it is very likely to expect that altcoins are going to continue to do really well um, after the halving has been taking place because the rotation from Bitcoin towards altcoins are likely going to be happening. And when that rotation starts to take place, that rotation is going to give massive returns on altcoins because the higher Bitcoin goes, the higher the altcoins will go by ultimate liquidity that is needed for the markets to continue. And when you say there's more liquidity, you can also say there's a substantial large amount of liquidity being provided through the ETFs towards Bitcoin, through which the difference is that this cycle, we see a new all time high prior to the halving, uh, but ultimately the price action is still comparable to the previous cycles. Through which you can conclude that this cycle is very comparable to the previous one and that this cycle has a uh, still has a normal four year cycle, but pre halving it has generated a return that is higher than the previous cycles. And because of the actual liquidity that has been providing through the ETFs, we can also expect the Bitcoin ETF um, to go to provide a return on Bitcoin higher than uh, we assumed um, at the start of this cycle. So when we are moving from the higher time frames to the lower time frames, we can conclude that Bitcoin has been stalling in a period of sideways consolidation. We can see that the sideways consolidation is taking place here in which a crucial resistance needs to be broken in order to have a new all time high test. So this is basically the area that we're looking at. What does it say? Well, it does say that we have this higher time frame bearish divergence here, 
which automatically means that we're on the edge um, of having a continued downwards momentum. But ultimately, um, we had seen this downwards momentum through which a new range bound construction for Bitcoin has been made. And this new range bound construction is having a cycle low or at least a range low. And we have a range high in which you, if this comes into this area, a breakout towards a new all time high pre halving is still likely to expect. Ultimately, I don't believe that that is an actual likely case. First, Bitcoin needs to break through this entire range of 70K, but that is a lower time frame area. I think this is the crucial resistance zone. If it breaks, it's great. If what you don't want to see if it is a breakout and then falling back into the range towards the range lows. But I think that if that is going to be happening and a continuation in the range is going to continue to happening for Bitcoin, it is a result for altcoins to start taking off especially if fundamentally Ethereum starts to move into the perspectives of being an actual viable um, argument to rotate your money from Bitcoin towards ETH. The first thing that I want to discuss when it comes to maximizing your returns is an important concept that GCR has been tweeting. GCR is a Twitter account. Um, I think he has been trading a lot of big size trades in the markets and he has been giving some pretty good actual advice for traders that are getting into the market. So I wanted to discuss that first and I want to dive into some important concepts when it comes to this. So he basically tweeted this. He said, general trading principle as we watch meme tokens pump. Remember, he tweeted this on 4th of February last year. During that period, we also had meme coins doing really well. Um, he mentions within altcoin cycles, you should crank up risk when the trend first reverses and begin to gradually protect capital as time passes. People lose because they do the exact opposite. They slow, are slow early and increasingly greedy with time. Um, and then he mentioned that I continue to hold large positions in spot Bitcoin and ETH as I believe we bottomed in November and remain bullish on the future with an eye on 10k eat by 2030 and 90% will be better off as holders. This advice only relevant to degen traders playing the game of shitcoin rotations. The last tweet actually says that actually there are many people at this point that are acting as degen traders, but they are not having the actual knowledge on how to be trading at all. They should be a holder and are better off by being an actual holder. Um, now, when we're looking at the um, first tweet, it has a lot of important implications. It says a lot of things about when do you need to take risks and when do you start to scale out? But what do people actually do? It is fueled by emotions and hype. So most people are actually consistent in taking risk when the hype starts to wake up, when the barber is telling them about crypto or when someone has been making a lot of return and then they start to actually rotate towards the actual market they come back they start losing conviction when the markets go down but come back when the markets are back up heavily but the most important return has been made already that is just how it, how these things happen and altcoin cycles have a very tiny window in which the returns are massive but um, in terms of um, exponential returns, you need to be able to trade and to get into the markets when you actually feel the lowest conviction of trading the actual assets. So if nobody is interested into an asset, that is the period that you should be getting interested because that's where the financial opportunity lies. And the difference is, is that during that period, Everybody around you, including social media, will tell you that you shouldn't be investing into an asset, but that's when you should. Well, on the other hand, if you look at the current scope, everybody is going to tell you you need to invest in Solana, you need to get into meme tokens, actually into AI. But in the opposite, you should be looking into segments that are not interesting at all. And in terms of taking risk, you should be taking a risk at the start when there is no interest, but you should be lowering the risk when there is all social media content out there. So that is how these things just work. Um, 
you need to be aware of the fact that you need to take a lot of fundamental background into it but um, if you take a very a very easy example and you go towards Solana um, I remember that during a period when it was at around seven to fifteen dollars the actual interest into it was super low there was no real interest into the actual asset there was no real buzz going around it so I think that in terms of interest right now it might be fundamentally the case but from a price and investment perspective it is a super bad time to start investing into it because the group of investors that were looking to get into it are already up a lot when it comes to the bitcoin growth which is around four and a half uh 440 percent since the cycle low um at the current valuations which means that in terms of usdt valuations um, they are probably up around 20x, 25x even if you calculate it in that way. So depending on the actual take profit region you have, but at this point there is so much uh, hype and buzz going around Serana, which is independent of whether it's a great project or not. But it should be a case that if you look at the data, that the data tells you that you should be scaling out of the actual asset or at least shouldn't be taking the amount of risk that you should be doing when there is no interest at all so when there's no interest at all you should be investing into things that are at this part of the cycle so if you compare this chart to what something like polkadot it is back to the cycle lows which automatically means that it gives you a lower conviction play or at least lower uh, sentiment play but it gives you the actual confirmation that you are investing into something that is undervalued at this point and is not being told about on social media. Well, on the other hand, Solana is something that everybody discusses. So in terms of taking risk, you need to be at the beginning of the curve, also comparable to Bitcoin at 15 to 25K. You should erase emotions. You should be looking at it rationally. Um, and your data can actually benefit you in that way by providing the actual arguments of doing something yes or no. When to scale out, I think that's going to be gradually, I've been discussing that in the videos, but taking gradual profits and rotating that towards another asset can be an altcoin, can be UCT, can be Bitcoin, can be ETH, depending on your own preference. Uh, but rot doing the rotation game is actually yielding you a lot more return. Now, when we look at narratives, AI is one that is doing really great. And if you think about AI, it is definitely AI is going to stay here for sure. It's going to stay here. But if you look at the charts of these narratives, it is again all over social media. Fetch has been seeing one, two, three, four, five, six cycles with an actual increasing number in terms of btc valuations so we have seen these runs we have seen fetch going up by approximately a thousand percent in 2021 and doing another run of 360 percent even in the mid cycle in 2020 we did a 750 percent here we have done a 650 percent and actually the last run is 650 percent on top of the Bitcoin gain against USDT. So I think this is a 30 to 35 X. If you also look back into the narratives from this data, you can see that if you're jumping in here, that all the people here are going to take profits. All right. So if you look back at the data from the previous cycles, you can see that there's a heavy correction taking place afterwards. So there's a correction of 80% taking place here. Another correction of approximately 90%. Uh, another correction taking place here, I think of around 90%, 85. Another correction taking place here of around 75%. And I guess we're going to see another correction taking place at some point for fetch of around 60% or maybe even more because history has told that those corrections are going to take place. Um, independent of bull or bear cycles, I think that this correction is more or less, more or less likely to happen here which is automatically meaning that we go down 50% because this happened in the in the midst of the bull cycle and generated a 64% correction. Um, and that is when you want to get in. So a narrative is great. It is going to work. There is going to be a lot of 
explosion when it comes to the narrative surrounding uh, surrounding AI, but it doesn't mean that you should be jumping into it at this point. So always divert from narrative and fundamentals to actual valuations and data. So fundamentals can be great. It can be a big project, but you should realize that during the period that it's sh being shouted as a great project, everything looks good when it's up there and everything looks bad when it's down there. But the valuation or the data point for a project might be super overvalued to the actual realized data. And especially as they are currently connecting three blockchains into one, I think that the valuation of Fetch is going to slow down over time. But the same is for Solana. The same is for any narrative that you could be using when it comes to the markets. So then if we are going towards narratives that you should be looking at, there are multiple ones. So you can just go towards CoinMarketCap where you get all the data points that you need with all these cryptocurrency sectors out there. And you don't need to look at most of them. But for instance, you could be looking at things that are um, real estate or you could be looking at launch pads or the base ecosystem, which is taking a lot of momentum at this point. Um, for me personally, I think that I've been trying to get into sentiment or segments that are not having any momentum at all. So my positions would be into real estate or in RWA or in DeFi or anything in layers that have not been seeing a run. So that's the first thing that you need to do is to generate an actual information to find the actual segments that you prefer to be invested in. And this is a list of projects that are doing real estate um, in which there are still small caps out there. The largest one is Propy, which is currently 220 million. Um, and the smallest is, I think, around a million or so or even smaller, which means that there is just basically a lot to gain when it comes to this market segment. Real world assets is the exact same thing. RWA is a new narrative that starts to wake up and it's going to be super huge in the coming period, um, automatically meaning that there is a lot of interest when it comes to this specific segment. So in that case, um, I'm looking at projects that are undervalued at this point or projects that have been seeing a massive correction the previous weeks to be sure that I position myself well when it comes to uh, projects that are likely going to follow through afterwards. And you can also do the exact same thing, which is looking at valuations that are under or overvalued, but also at narratives. So if a segment is having higher volumes, higher liquidity, uh, positive returns, that is when the movement starts to go towards a certain narrative. As I mentioned, layer ones is also something that I find interesting. I'm looking at this segment to specifically see what the other segments are doing. So, or the other projects are doing. So in this case, Solana has been doing great. It has rallied towards 82 billion. Ethereum is not doing great, of course. Um, but also other altcoins are not doing great. So for instance, Cardano, AVAX are not great. Polkadot is still not doing great. Tron is doing great. ICP, near all projects that have been turning into positive returns. So you can start specifying your list on the assets that you would like to get into and the ones that you don't want to get into. And the ultimate lesson is still newer coins are better than older coins if you want to invest into them. And then once you have been doing this, you need to start scanning the valuations of the specific assets. So if you look at the layer ones and if you look at the data points, then you can see that Solana has been doing a run of around 430% and AVAX is basically just coming all the way back down as it is currently only up 129% and it's also down around 40% since its recent high. And I think that once AVAX is going to get into the cycle lows parts here, so a full correction, it shows that that is likely going to happen to many altcoins, but it's also getting into a theory or a territory that I want to be interested in. So swap towards narratives that have not getting, uh, are not getting so much hype as you have been seeing with all the other segments, but get into those, get into projects that are undervalued and start scaling out because AVAX is given an example of things that are correcting heavily. Um, just start scaling out and start getting into projects 
that are undervalued or still ready to make the actual move. And now how am I going to approach this and what did I learn from the previous cycle? So how did I do in the previous cycle and what do I want to do right now? And how do I want to be an investor in the current markets or move into these current markets? Well, as I mentioned in the beginning, I've made 50K out of 3K in the first cycle and I've made 10 million out of 30K in the second cycle. Now, the first thing that I did when I went from 3 to 50K was that I was fully allocated towards altcoins thinking that I was going to be doing really well. Um, ultimately leading into round tripping all those fun, all those profits um, leading towards being back to square, square one and starting off again in 2019. In the second cycle, I actually ge generated a lot of return by going from 30k to 10 million by having some giant returns from altcoins, buying them super early uh, because they generally just only have a few important levels that you can actually buy into them which is in the period that we're currently moving into and then you just generally need to hold them so i have been doing a 200x on ferocity i've been doing a 30x on matic i've been doing a great return on Chainlink, and all those things added up to having that 10 million but that was just a split second because uh, the days after your portfolio starts to uh, to have a U-turn, when the markets start to have a U-turn, you need to make split-second decisions. And you need to be aware that 90% of the people that enter the markets are going to be ending off by losing money. Um, and actually, a fun fact is that 90% of the participants join the markets at the latest 10% of price movements. Um, so, for instance, in the previous cycle, 90% of the new participants joined when Bitcoin crossed $50,000. Um, so in terms of timing, you're super early. You're still very, very early and you're a survivor of the previous bear market. So that is a great thing. Now, what did I learn from the previous few cycles is that I didn't have any risk management and I didn't have an actual plan going into the cycles. And I was very greedy on getting a higher return. So... I became married with my backs and um, I had to take these choices or take these risks by having split second decisions during the actual price movements of a portfolio going to levels that I wasn't expecting it to be going, which I felt uh, uncomfortable uncom with because of the actual value that was in there. Um, you should realize that during the period that I went from 3 to 50k, I was just a student, so having such a portfolio was new to me. In the second market, going to from from um, uh, 30k towards uh, close to 10 million or even 10 million, it was a number that I wasn't expecting to see at all. Um, so I started to become greedy and expecting it to go higher, and in, in return, we actually went lower. So. The overall concern that I have when it comes to uh, the, the current cycles is that I have a very strict plan in place. I have a very strict risk management in place. I've quit trading through fixed take, take profits and stop losses. I'm just doing allocations um, and I'm rotating back from altcoins to Bitcoin because um, ultimately what I learned is that the ultimate goal is to have a larger exposure towards Bitcoin and you don't need to have those small altcoins in your portfolio to have a giant return. The actual return is made by rotating on the right time. And if you double your or even triple your amount in Bitcoin and hold that until the end of the cycle, it is generating a 10 to 15 X anyways, which is enough return into a cycle because you have been outperforming Bitcoin. Um, and the actual return is made by scaling out of the market. So that's what I've learned. Um, in the next part, we're going to discuss this, what I just mentioned, where how do you actually generate a return in Bitcoin value, making sure that you compound those returns. So I'll give you some theoretical background once we jump over towards the charts all over again. Our mission is to provide you all with a financially stable future through crypto. When I started, I felt overwhelmed and it was hard to find the right information on the markets or to keep up with the latest news. That's why we decided to create the Crypto 101 course 
once you start building your own portfolio, it's a must to know everything surrounding the cryptocurrency markets. What is Bitcoin? What is Ethereum? What does DeFi do? And even more. A fundamental background gives you a lot of information to be able to investigate potential business opportunities. Alongside with that, it's a must to know how you should be balancing and building your portfolio, what techni technical analysis means and how your portfolio can be secured. In the Crypto 101 course, I'll be guiding you through an eight hour course through all the fundamental first steps of understanding the markets, building portfolios, reading charts and mindset. It's a course that I wish I had when I started and it's designed for you to lower your beginner mistakes. Click on the link in the description below to see what the course consists of and make sure to reach out through our email if you have any questions. So now the important part is, what are you going to actually do to compound your returns? So um, there are a few important concepts to know. First of all, how many cycles are altcoins going to do really well? First thing you need to do, and I'll be using a few examples for this, is when are they actually moving? So um, in this case, I've got an example of uh, Litecoin here, which has yielded a massive return during 2015, which was prior to their halving of um, Litecoin. Then it basically had a downwards momentum where the price has been dropping 90%. And as a result, in 2017, during a period of strength of Bitcoin, we saw a return of 670% as well. Then basically again downwards turns in 2021, just a slight push. But the conclusion is that from February 2018 peak, it has been down only for more than six years, resulting into negative returns of not having the actual great project. So the first thing you can see here is that not many altcoins are going to do well, but when you're looking at the UCT valuations, you can see that it's actually not as painful as we were expecting it to be. Um, but in that case, you can still see that there are altcoins out there that are going to be doing well. Um, and those altcoins are coins that can keep on having cycles in which I've showed you one example. Um, First of all, when you're looking at this momentum, you can see that most of the returns are actually made after the halving has been taking place. All right, I'll be going through it. First run here is starting in May 2020, April 2020. When is that? Well, this was the COVID-19 crash. And in June 2020, we had the actual halving after which the first run happened. First conclusion. Altcoins do well after Bitcoin has been doing well. Then a period of heavy consolidation. And in 2021, we had two new runs for a whole year, new year. And then the bear market starts to take place. After the bottom was in, it started to have a new run until we had a new correction taking place again. Um, and from here, from August 2023, it basically was up only um, in which we are currently facing the actual halving. All right. So that is, it, it, it is a period of cycles in which altcoins in this case, in the terms of fetch, it is just having 13 weeks. It is having another 11 weeks of a return. This is a longer 11 weeks as well of a return. Here we have seen 12 weeks. Um, and in this case, it was a prolonged one of 22 weeks. So you can see that the window of altcoins to perform well is a very narrow window of approximately a few months all right that is when these altcoins are moving and those altcoins are going to have a longer period of consolidation as you can see before it started to take a new run it has been going down for 61 weeks and in the same case you can see the exact same thing uh, in which we had a correction of 37 weeks so Yes, your altcoin can go down for week after week after week after week. Um, but your altcoin is also going to have that upwards run for a few periods or a few months of time. It is having cycles. And because of the fact that it's having cycles, you need to be aware of the fact of 
when to step into the altcoins and how to actually be able to rotate towards Bitcoin. And I'm going to use the example of, of, uh, of Fetch once again, because it's just a great, great example. So let's assume that during this period, you have been investing one Bitcoin into Fetch in this part, all right? Um, now, if you have been keeping the actual asset and you were not rotating it back into, uh, uh, into Bitcoin, then at this point you would have been up around 1140 percent all right now if you actually have been able to compound or you are actually able to rotate it back towards bitcoin in a, in, a, in a period in between and rotate it back from bitcoin to fetch you might be able to compound those returns and in order to actually discuss this i would like to go back towards the chain link example which we have been discussing in previous videos as well but i think it is super important to realize the actual impact that it has of having the rotation game taking place. Um, in this case, you can see that Chainlink has been having a peak in August 2020. All right, you need to remember that August 2020. That is the peak of Chainlink against Bitcoin. The peak of Chainlink against USD was taking place in May 2021. So a period afterwards in which August 2020, we reached the number of $18 um, and then we reached a number of $53, which is 53.18. It's around 3x from the actual all time high in Chainlink against Bitcoin. Now, what did Bitcoin do in the exact same period? Well, from August 2020, it went from $11,800 to May 2021, uh, which is around uh, $56,000. So that's a five to six X, which means that if you do not rotate between the two assets, you are losing compounding returns. So if you kept your chain link the entire cycle, your returns are a three X. But once you were rotating it back from Chainlink towards Bitcoin, your actual returns might be 9 to 12 to 13 X uh, because you compound and stack those returns as Bitcoin has been doing a 6 X in between that period. Now, I'll show you an example of this through Fetch. If, for instance, um, you would have been able to um, invest into Fetch, as I just mentioned, for around one Bitcoin in this period, all right? Then that one Bitcoin has been accelerating towards, uh, let's say two and a, 250%, all right? You have been taking it into this run. So it's up two and a half percent, 250%. One BTC investment is now three and a half BTC after the, the run, okay? That is great, that's a good start. Now we also know that Bitcoin is going to have its runs and also the altcoin is going to have its runs. What if Fetch is going to do what Chainlink has been doing in the previous cycle through which we are going to have a case of um, Bitcoin going into a hyper run and Fetch is going to just come back down 80% again, that this is the actual peak of Fetch against Bitcoin and that the actual peak of Fetch against UGT is further down the line but the return that you would be having by swapping into Bitcoin is maybe going to be higher from here. So what I mean by that is, okay, so if um, I have three and a half Bitcoin right now, what is the difference going to be by rotating the altcoin back towards Bitcoin? Okay, well, let's say there are two examples. Let's say, um, my return on fetch against Bitcoin by simply holding is going to drop from three and a half example one. Fed is dropping from three and a half BTC to 1.75 BTC during the cycle. Its returns, well, let's say Bitcoin goes to 200K, it's $350,000, all right? Example two, Fed is dropping, but I sold it all and I went to BTC in that is three and a half BTC is returns. If it is 200K is $700,000. All 
So if that is the case, then you can see that your difference is super massive in terms of end returns in the markets. So if you start off in a cycle and you start off by investing into an altcoin at this point, based on the BTC valuations that they provide, and you're having a high return in BTC valuation, rotating back towards Bitcoin and keeping that actual return into your portfolio is yielding a compounding return then by sticking into the actual asset because by believing that the asset is going up by USDT doesn't mean that you get the maximum return of your portfolio. All right, so this is one case, but what if there are multiple cycles like we can see here in the previous one. So in that case, your one Bitcoin in fetch has been going towards um, three and a half Bitcoin. When fetch is going down 50 to 80%, you in the extreme case, you swap back the three and a half Bitcoin in it. Then it does another three and a half X. You've got 11 Bitcoin. And then at 11 Bitcoin, you keep in there until the end of the run. And then all of a sudden, that one Bitcoin investment at the start of here, which might be at $50,000, is not going to yield 350K, but by compounding those returns, it might yield 2 million plus. So making millions in a cycle is possible by some very generic, super simple concepts to use, which is understanding the valuations of the altcoins and which is by understanding how to compound through the entire cycle because it is not about having that 100x in your portfolio it is about compounding your portfolio by correct risk management and understanding what hype and valuations are going to be doing i'll be using another example um, to actually add this one um, arbitrum is currently down well, a little bit more than I show here, but it's down around 60%. It if it is going down another uh, percentage and it ends off at 1500 or 1600 sets, then it's down 700%, uh, 70%, okay? Imagine that you are able to invest at 1700 sets and it goes back here. You are taking 200%, which is a 3x in terms of returns, okay? So... You go from one Bitcoin to three Bitcoin. Then one Bitcoin was valued at $60,000. Bit, uh, $60, you got three. You get towards 180K at that point already if Bitcoin remains neutral, which is likely to happen before it starts to have another run. That three Bitcoin, if Bitcoin goes to 300K or to 200K or 300K, it doesn't matter, is yielding a return from that 60K towards 600K or to 900K, which is a 15X. Imagine if that at some point in the cycle, that three Bitcoin is going to put back into Arbitrum when it ha is having a 50% correction. Um, you spend it again, you spend the three Bitcoin into Arbitrum, do another three X and you've got nine Bitcoin. And then all of a sudden that $50,000 or $60,000 is going to end off by having nine Bitcoin yielding you 1.8, or 2.7 million. So that is a 30X on your entire portfolio by a few simple tricks. And it's not watching an influencer and saying, I need to get a small gem because that is just not the strategy that you should be going for. It is super simple. So if you have from, from 10K towards 1 million is a 100X and I've just been yielding a small altcoin that is doing a 3x. You need to do it twice and rotate it through and you got to us a 30x already. Imagine if you are timing fetch the right way in the previous cycle. Then if you have been starting off by one Bitcoin during periods that are, relative, are relatively low. And of course you cannot be take the actual timing of the actual peak. But if your average return is four to five Bitcoin, then one Bitcoin becomes, uh, let's say five Bitcoin, if you take the actual riskier place at this point, then five Bitcoin becomes, uh, is rotated back into a period after 50 to 60% correction, which ultimately uh, automatically means another 
300 percent five bitcoin becomes 15 bitcoin then your valuation of one bitcoin to sixty thousand um, dollars and then bitcoin becomes 300k which is a case is yielding four and a half million so then you are up 70 to 80x that's it so it is not about generating a 100x it is about understanding bitcoin valuations understanding the altcoin cycles timing it well compounding it through and you can also do this concept by having a base pair of ETH or having a base pair of Chainlink and then you are actually able to generate a return that is substantial and that is just as high as those small gem investments that are super risky but um, it's more risk averse that's how it is the final part that I would like to discuss is um, what if you have 50 altcoins in your portfolio and um, all of them have a 2% allocation. That is also a case, all right? That is also a possibility. I don't see any sense at all in having that. My general rule of thumb into getting towards those large valuations is um, having around eight to 10 altcoins in your portfolio. If that is your maximum, your allocation is going to be 10%. If it does a 4x, it is yielding a 40% increase in your portfolio. If a coin is having a 1% allocation, you need to spend the exact same amount of time of managing that actual asset, but it's yielding you a return of 4% of the portfolio. And by understanding that um, the marginal time you need to spend to manage the altcoins in your portfolio is equal, it means that by having 50 altcoins, you need to spend way more time for a lower marginal return. So having 8 to 10 altcoins in your portfolio, it is able to manage and it is having an impact in your portfolio overall. And you can generate that return that you want to generate, making sure that you're going to be uh, making those massive returns that you want to be making overall. In this bull market, I'm going to be looking to not invest into the small altcoins that I've been investing into the previous cycle. I'm looking to actually dive into altcoins that I think are actually having an impact and a use case in this cycle or in the ecosystem that might not be generating the exact same amount of return than those small gems, but I'm hyper focused on getting the highest return possible with them because I understand the concept of compounding. So I don't need a 10 to 50x on an altcoin. I need a triple in BTC valuation. And then I rotate it to Bitcoin knowing I can 10x my account anyway. Um, and if I get a higher return of, or if I'm able to achieve another run into altcoins, then I'm going to exceed my number of performance and I'm going to exceed my return overall. So. That is my key concept when it comes to trading in these cycles or trading into this market, approaching the future of my trading and investing career, that if I know that I'm going to be doing it in such a way that Bitcoin or ETH is going to be my base pair, depending on the market structure. And I just want to accumulate as much of those as possible uh, because of the fact that those are scarce and there is a deflationary uh, principle in terms of for ethereum and there's also a decreasing amount of inflation and actually if you look at it from the investment perspective um, the inflow is way higher than the amount of bitcoin being mined which is deflationary i just want to accumulate as much as possible of an asset that is scarce um, and that is my goal so looking at projects like arbitrum or chainlink at this point these valuations are at cycle low. So I want to scoop them. If I'm going to be going down for now by 30 to 40% of my Bitcoin valuations, that's completely fine. I just stick into it because I know that my RR is 10 to one. Um, if I go three to four acts from here, I'll keep my Bitcoin. I'm completely happy and I'll consist of having that towards the end of the cycle 
knowing that I just need to get out of the markets at the right time possible. And if I do that, I've been 10 xing my portfolio, but I also know that that is the way that I'll be making those millions in this cycle. And I'm super sure that this is going to be the strategy that you should be looking for if you want to have a risk averse or free um, or secure way of going towards financial freedom without having all the stress of scanning projects that you don't understand, but by having projects that you do understand and that you just need to realize what evaluations of altcoins are. So um, that's actually my strategy during this strategy, during this cycle. I hope you have been enjoying this video and has been providing content for you in the next step towards financial freedom towards a financially stable future. If you did enjoy the video, can I ask you for a favor for your feedback in the comment section beneath? We are thriving or trying to improve the content as best as we can. And every feedback is helpful and valuable for us to continue building this channel. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you again next week on the next episode of Finance Forward.